So this lesson that I'm about to get into basically is about um, how do you inquire of the Most High? Come. You know what I'm saying? People think they can just talk to the Most High. You know what I'm saying? They think they can just um, convene with the Most High when they want to. You know what I'm saying? And it don't work like that at first. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to say at first because once you study and the Most High dealing with you, then you on that level of the Most High dealing with you. You can you can inquire of him yourself. And uh, you can be used to inquire him of other people. God. Right? So, I'm going to title this Since the World Began. It's been going on since the world began. And I'm going to open up with uh, Luke chapter 1 and verse 7. Everybody got to say con. Con. Hey, Dante, you going to be in the video. Go in the video, bro, man. <laughs> this video here. <laughs> you going to be in the video. Back there and, and, and lay it down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be All praises, though, man. <laughs> I just had to give you a warning so you will be surprised. Right, so this is the word began, Luke chapter one, verse seven. You could you could follow along too on this one, so you don't you know you know so you can stay in the spirit, man. You can stay in the spirit around here. You know, it's a it's a full time job to uh, fight these demons, man. Right. You know, as soon as you wake up, they hit and they attack you. So you just got to be prepared. Right. You know, um, we're going to Luke one and seventy. It's a lot here. That is so true, man. Pray for the brothers because they be going through it. Huh? Uh, powerful, man. Christ was powerful, man. He went to the sick. Broken up. Yeah, so another thing, too, man, like. Even in the beginning, you know, when um, Adam and Eve went off and they were trying to hide from the Lord and they heard his voice walking through the garden, you know, that was a prophet. That was a seer, right. you know, that they that they was um, inquiring the Lord, how they was inquiring the Lord, right. you know, since the beginning, since the world began. All right. So this Luke 1 and 70, when everybody got it, say come. All right. So this is the book of Luke chapter 1, verse 70, and it reads. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, right? So he spake by the word of his prophets since the world began, right? Come. And um, that goes all the way back to Genesis, like I was saying, right? So let's go to Genesis real quick Come. to elaborate on that. Genesis 3, and we could start at verse 8. Genesis 3 and verse 8. Great, great God. And when you got it, bring it out, I'll... This is a beautiful breakdown. I got it. Come on. You read it? I got it. Oh, you bring it up. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden of the wood. And they and Adam and his wife hid themselves in the presence of the Lord down amongst the trees of the garden. Come on, read that again closer to the mic. I mean, like, just actually, I'm just actually going to go with that. Yeah, just so good. And they heard me. Because you got to just like, this, 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 just bring it out, King. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves in the presence of the Lord God on the trees in the garden. All right, so keep go to the verse 9. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said, What's your name? Where, where are thou? Right, so Adam, Adam and Eve was trying to hide themselves from the Lord because they went off. You know what I'm saying? They was trying to hide within these nations, within these people, trees, or as people, or as nations. And they was trying to hide themselves. But the Lord was asking, hey, where y'all at? You know what I'm saying? What's going on? And that was a prophet talking to them because the Most High spake by the mouth of his holy prophet since the world began. Right. Read, read it, you read it again, uh, uh, Genesis 3, uh, Genesis 3 and 8. Just read it a little louder for me. Okay. It's a book of Genesis chapter 3 and verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God 
walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Right. So it's a prophet looking for Adam. Because Adam was the first chosen prophet. Right. He probably had to congregate. You know what I'm saying? Right. They probably had they probably supposed to meet up for Sabbath or something. Right. You know what I'm saying? But Adam was ducked off. Right. And his and his his, his right hand man or his brother was like, Hey, where you at? Right. But the Lord was speaking through this man. Right. You know what I'm saying? So um Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 5. You know, because we got to understand that the Most High, He don't directly talk to us. Right. You know, especially when we um, just now coming into the truth. Right. You know, it ain't just He, he telling you stuff in your mind. He does, but you got to talk to somebody with some wisdom of the scriptures right. for Him to really speak to you. Right. You know what I'm saying? So uh, go to uh, 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 5. Bring it up. Uh, yeah. It's the book of 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 5. And spare not the old world, but save Noah, the eight persons, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Right. So he spared not the world the first time, meaning he destroyed the earth the first time, but he saved Noah and his family. And what was Noah? A preacher of righteousness. Right. You know, when you go in the, the book of Genesis, you don't have an account where Noah was preaching, right. but he was a preacher. He preached the word of the Most High. He right. was a prophet, right? And when you go into the um, blue letter for the word preacher, right? The biblical outline usage, it say a herald or a messenger vested with public authority Come who on. conveyed the official messages of kings, magistrates, uh, princes, military commanders, or who gave a public sum summons or demand and performed various other duties. In the New Testament, the Most High's ambassador and the herald or proclaimer of the divine word. So a preacher or a prophet is a proclaimer of the divine word. You know what I'm saying? We proclaim it. And that's what the Most High do with his prophets. He used them to proclaim his words. So when we inquire of the Lord, we have to go through a seer or a prophet. Right? We have to. Um, and let me get 1 Samuel. Matter of fact, let me get um, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 37. Chapter 24, 37. Verse 37. I got it. Come. Come. Bring it up. Me? Mm -hmm. Come. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 37. But as the days of no word, so also, so like it, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also be the coming of the Son of Man. Right. So Yahushai is pro proclaiming the words of the Most High. Right. You know what I'm saying? He, they are they are sitting there and being inquired by the Lord God. through Yahweh Shah. Because he's straight up telling them what the Lord is about to do. Right. Because the Lord is dealing with Yahweh Shah on the level that he has dealt with no man because he's invested in his truth, his word, right. constantly. God. You know what I'm saying? Some gonna believe, some not. But that's fine. He giving you direct word, direct order from the Heavenly Father, what's going to be done. Right. And that's what we are here to do. You know right. what I'm saying? That's our job. That's right. our mission. Right. You know, those that are called to do that. You know, we all have different offices. We all have different lots. But right. for the most part, his, his message is brought forth by his men. Right. right? Directly. So let's go to um, 1 Samuel 9 and 9. First Samuel chapter nine, verse nine. And I'm finna go into accounts of men inquiring of the Lord. And they're going through men to inquire of the Lord. It's not directly to the Lord, they're going through men. 
Yeah. All right. So 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 9, and it reads, Before time in Israel, when a man went to inquire of the Most High, thus he spake, Come, and let us go, go up to the seer, and let us go up to the seer. For he that is now called a prophet was before time called a seer. So when men wanted to go acquire the Lord, they went to a seer, which is called prophet um, in today's time. So I mean, you said 2 Samuel 9 and 9. First, first Samuel 9 and 9. Samuel 9 and 9. First Samuel 9 and 9. And we'll bring it out again. Yeah, this is fire. So I was wondering why I couldn't. That's, that's something that just came to me. Light too. Because when you because when you were saying Noah was a prophet of righteousness or a preacher of righteousness, it really opens up that parable too about, you know, as in the days of the Son of Man, so will be in the days of Lot and Noah, meaning we're going to be preaching until the kingdom of God come. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's crazy. The same thing. Come. That's crazy. Come. The same thing. People partying, drinking, right, right. Fun, uh, gainsaying, mocking, scoffing. That's crazy. Until them fire and brimstone rain from the heavens, man. That's crazy. You know? I never thought about that. Before. We probably going to be out there teaching. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or we're going to be congregating right. while the world looking for answers. You know what I'm right. saying? Where them boys at? That was out there on the corner preaching. You know what right. I'm saying? Where they at now? We in the ark. Right. We in the ark. Right. <laughs> we chilling. <laughs> the same thing, man. So uh, 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 9 again, and it reads, Before time in Israel, when a man went to inquire of the Most High, thus he spake, Come, and let us go to the seer. For he that is now called a prophet was before time called a seer. So the, the terms just change from seer to right. prophet. You know what I'm saying? And that's how you inquire of the Most High. And it's been that way since the world began. Because the, the, uh, the Heavenly Father spoke by the mouth of his holy prophet. That's how he speaks to us. Right. So you got to be attentive when the man of the Lord is speaking. When you know somebody really keeping the commandments or trying to keep the commandments and they're applying themselves, listen to them when they speak, man. Because right. that's the Heavenly Father speaking through that, that soul, man, that vessel. Right, so let's go to um, Exodus 18 and verse 13 real quick. Exodus 18 and verse 13. Because the, 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 the high priest Moses, man, he was, um, <laughs> he was the one that they went to to inquire of the Most High. You know what I'm saying? And these just accounts and examples of how we did. You know what I'm saying? Stay close to a man of the Most High in these last days. Because the most I speaking through these through these people, man. Exodus chapter 18 and verse 13. And it reads, And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses sat to judge the people. And the people stood by Moses from the morning until the evening. So they was hanging out with him all day. Right. You know what I'm saying? They had questions, they needed answers. Right. You know, they was curious, you know, they, they needed to know things. What was going on in their life, what they was having trouble with, how the Most High dealing with him, what message that they can get from this man of the Most High. Right. right? Verse 14. And when Moses, and when Moses' father-in-law said all that Salakia. And when Moses father in Salakia. <laughs> and when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did to the people, he said, What is this thing that thou doesest to the people? Why sittest thou thyself alone and all the people stand by thee from morning until evening? Because he was curious. He was outside the loop. He didn't know what was going on. Right. But he still had wisdom too. You know, he right. the most high was dealing with his father right. as well. Was, was. Because he gave him advice right. on how to handle this situation. Right. right? So verse 15, and it reads, And Moses said unto his father-in-law, Because the people come unto me to inquire of the most high. Mm -hmm. So when somebody wants to inquire of the Lord, they went to Moses. Right. You know what I'm saying? They went to a man of the Lord to inquire of the Lord. Right? Verse 16. When they have a matter, they come unto me, and I judge between one and another. And I do make them know the statutes of the Most High and his laws. Right? right? So if you want to go 
uh, inquire of the Lord on your life, on what you should be doing, or on your mistakes, you confessing your faults, or whatever. You want to inquire to somebody that you know that the most high dealing with as far as keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, keeping his feast days, applying their life to him. You know this person dedicated to the most high. So you want to inquire right. of that person. Like me, I asked my brother right here for advice. You know what I'm saying? Because I know that he studied, that he going to go to the scriptures. Right. So I'm inquiring of the Lord through my brother. You know what I'm saying? Or through the elder, through right. the elders of HOI, through the elders of any congregation who I feel I need to talk to. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to inquire of those men that are dealing with the most high on right. that level. You know what I'm saying? And that's a prime example right there. Um, another one. Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 19. And we'll start at verse 20. 2 Kings 19 and verse 20. And when you got it up, bring it out. Um, you're going to read down to 34. Huh? Okay. Just to, just to hear this message. This is more so for those who don't read scriptures. We're going to read it for you. Right. You know, so you can hear of this account where men are inquiring of the Most High. I want to say this account of David inquiring of the Most High. Uh, Salaki, you no, know, this is Isaiah speaking. Salaki, this is Isaiah speaking. And um, just bring it out. Bring it out. Huh? Come. This is the book of Second Chief, Second Kings, chapter nineteen, verse twenty. Then Isaiah, the son of Amos, sent to Hezekiah, saying, "Thus saith the Lord God of Israel." That which thou hast prayed to me against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, I have heard. This is the word that the Lord has spoken concerning him. The virgin, the daughter of Zion, had despised thee. Con, con, like So this is Isaiah speaking to Hezekiah of what the Lord told him to tell Hezekiah, right? This is the account. He's speaking to Hezekiah, thus said the Lord what the Lord told him to tell him, and this is what's going on. Keep reading up. Come, the virgin, the daughter of Zion, had despised thee and laughed thee to scorn. The daughter of Jerusalem hath shaken her head at thee. Whom hast thou repro reproached and blasphemed? And against whom hast thou exalted thy voice and lift up thy eyes on high, even against the Holy One of Israel? By the messengers, thou hast reproached the Lord, and hast said with the multitude of my chariots, I am come up to the height of the mountains, to the sides of Lebanon, and will cut down the tall cedar trees thereof, and the choice fire trees thereof, and I will enter into the lodging of his borders, and into the forest of his caramel. I have digged and drunk strange waters, and with the sole of my feet have I dried up all the rivers of besieged places. Hast thou not heard long ago mm -hmm. how I have done it, and of ancient times that I have formed it? Now have I brought it to pass that thou shouldest be to lay waste fenced cities into ruinous heaps? Therefore their inhabitants were of small power. They were dismayed and confounded. They were as the grass of the field, and as of the green herb, as the green as the grass on the housetops, and as corn blasted before it be grown up. But I know thy abode, and thy going out, and thy coming in, and thy rage against me, because thy rage against me, and thy tumult is come up into my ears. Therefore I will put my hook in thy nose and my brittle in thy lips, and I will turn thee back by the way by which thou camest. And this shall be a sign unto thee, ye shall eat this year such things as grow of themselves, and in the second year that which springeth of the same, and in the third year sow ye and reap, and plant vineyards, and eat the fruits thereof. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall yet again take root downward, and bear fruit upward. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant, and they that escape out of Mount Zion, the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall do this. Come. That's verse 34? No, no, that's verse 31. 
Or the 34 hours. Come. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come back, nor come before it with shield, nor cast a bank against it. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return, and shall not come into the city, said the Lord. For I will defend this city to save it for my own sakes and for my servant David's sake. Con, con. Read uh, verse 20. Start at verse 20 again. So this is an account of Isaiah prophesying to Hezekiah. Read verse 20 again. Con. It says, Then Isaiah the son of Amos sent to Hezekiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, That which thou hast prayed to me against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, I have heard. So Hezekiah been praying to the Lord, right? He been praying to the Lord for deliverance. You know what I'm saying? And the Most High heard his prayer and sent Isaiah to him right. to relay his message. Right. And that's how the Heavenly Father worked, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's the power of our Heavenly Father. Right. You know, you pray to him, he could send a brother or even a sister to you right. to, to prophesy to you about what you've been praying to him about, what you've been right. talking to him about. You know what I'm saying? That must be understood because you can't just chunk people off because you're chunking off the Lord when they come in telling you directly what the Lord, been, what you've been asking from the Lord and they come in directly and telling you. You right. can't chunk people off like that, especially if they really in this word, if they really in this walk for real. You know, because he spake by his holy prophets since the world began. This is how he speak to us. You know, he speak to us through signs and wonders. He speak to us through judgments, but he speak to us by the mouth of his holy prophets for sure. Because right. it's thus said the Lord. You know what I'm saying? It's thus said the Lord, right? So um, let's go to Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. And I'm going to um, start at verse 1. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 1. Isaiah was a mighty man of the Most High. Yeshua, he was a mighty man of the Most High. Right? Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 1. The book Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1 In the year that King Uzziah died I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne High and lifted up And his train filled the temple Con. So let's go to 2 Chronicles 26 and 23 Just to get the account This is the time that Isaiah is speaking about Or Yeshua is speaking about Second Chronicles chapter 26 and verse 23, just to give an account. Twenty-six and twenty-three. Come on, bring it up. It's the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 26, verse 23. So Uzziah slept with his fathers, and they buried him with his fathers. In the field of the burial which belonged to the kings. For they said, He is a leper, and Jotham his son reigned in his stead. Right. So during this time when Uzziah died, this is when Isaiah got this vision from the Lord. You know what I'm saying? And this is the account from Isaiah chapter 6. Now let's go back to Isaiah chapter 6 just to show you how the precepts line up, you know? Because when you read, you really have to read and link these stories together. You know, that's the mysteries of the, of the, of the scriptures. Right. You know, Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 6. six. And we'll start at verse 1 again. Bring it out. Uh, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. About it stood the seraphims, each one has six wings, with twain he covered his face, 
and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. Come on, read down to eight. Come. On. Verse three. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. And that's the spirit we got to be in. Right. When the, when the Most High asks, who can he send? He's supposed to say, here I am, send me. Right. You know what I'm saying? You got to let the Lord use your vessel to bring forth his message. Right. Not your own message. Not your own doctrines. Right. Not your own belief. Right. You know what I'm saying? You got to bring forth his truth. Right. That's why he say, lean not into your own understanding. You got to bring forth his message. Right. Damn how you feel about it. You know what I'm saying? Many are called, few are chosen. Right. Because... They don't want to be, you know, they don't want to feel that, that vote. They don't want to do their assignment. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a burden at times. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. People try to balance their family with the truth and you have to have balance. But some days the, the spirit just on you to all study. Right. Some days the spirit just on you to go out and teach all day. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So when the Most High asks you, you know, who shall I, who can I send? You're supposed to be, hey, me, send me. He done purged your sin. He done cleansed you from your filthiness. Why not? Right. You know what I'm saying? He did that for you. What can you do for him? Right. You know what I'm saying? Keep reading up. Read, read the rest down to uh, 13 from 9 to 13. Come. Isaiah chapter Start at eight again. Uh, so I... 6 and verse 8. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, Until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. And the Lord have removed men far away, and there be a great forsaken in the midst of the land. But yet in it shall be a tent, and it shall return, and shall be eaten as a tile tree, and as an oak whose substance is in them, when they cast their leaves, so the holy seed shall be substance thereof. Con, That's con. So the Most High was convening with Isaiah mm -hmm. because he dedicated his life to the Most High. He confessed his faults and the Most High healed him, gave him knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, and gave him an assignment and told him how it would go. You know what I'm saying? And in this world, our days are... What we do in life, you know what I'm saying? We really don't have knowledge of the outcome of it. You know what I'm saying? We just live it. Like, like the curses say, uh, you don't know when you're going in right. or when you're coming out. You right. curse when you go out, you curse when you come in. Right. You don't know how your day going to go. Right. You don't know if you're going to make it back to the house. Right. But when the Most High give you an assignment, you know you got some time. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know you have some days or some weeks or some months or some years. You know right. you got... You know you got some time to fulfill this mission, right? Right, and that's that's the beautiful thing about being a servant or a prophet of the Most High. You know what I'm saying? He convened with you on a personal level, right. and he used you to convene the others right. by his power. You know what right. I'm saying? Through his will, and Come that's a, that's a very beautiful thing, man. To to be a spokesman 
of the Most High. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because even sometimes when I be speaking, it be like a spirit on me. I don't know where it's coming from. It's just right. going. You know what I'm saying? That be the Most High. That's all it is. Right. That's the angels, the Most High, Yahweh Shai, bringing forth a message to tell our brothers and our sisters and our um. children in these last days, man. So the Most High spake by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began, man. Um. You know, and once you on that level of servitude to the Most High, then you can inquire of him yourself. Right. Or he'll just come to you and give you information. Right. Give you visions, dreams, assignments. Right. You know what I'm saying? He seal our instructions when we sleep. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's in the book of Job. Right. Referring to the book of Job. When we sleep, that's when he come and seal our instructions. Of right. what we have to do for that day. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. yeah. The Most High gave uh, Isaiah a vision, a assignment, you know, and... Isaiah had to go fulfill that. You know, he did it willingly. I'm here, send me. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm willing to drink of that cup. Right. I'm willing to do what you say. I'm willing to be obedient to what you just told me. Right. And that's how we gotta be at all times. Right. right? Um, so let's go to um, sec, uh, First King, chapter 22. And we'll start at verse five. First Kings chapter 22 And we're going to start at verse 5 And this is an account Of a wicked king You know trying to go to war You know um, What is Jehoshaphat Trying to go to war with Syria right yeah. And he bringing in all these prophets He brought in over 400 prophets To prophesy to him and ask him what he should do And all these prophets Came and straight up lied to him It was 400 false prophets you know what I'm saying? They're telling him to go into this battle that the Lord going to deliver uh, Syria into his hands. But that's not the case, man. That's why you got to really be circumspect about who really serving the Lord and who really pretending to serve the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a lot of false prophets. These churches are false prophets. You know, uh, the Sunday, the Sunday Sabbath, the, the Trinity Doctrine, like the brother was saying. You know what I'm saying? They just, they serve in their own belly. They want the vain glory. They want, they want praise of men. You know what I'm saying? They're not keeping the Shabbat. They're not keeping the high holy days. Right. They're not keeping the commandments, period. Oh, the, the Lord did away with the commandments. Them, them, them prophets there, them the ones you really got to watch out for. You know what I'm saying? Now you have prophets with, within the nation of Israel that's, that's in this truth who are false prophets as well. You know what I'm saying? Because they're going against the law, statutes, and right. commandments. They going against Yahweh Shai. Right. You know, Yahweh Shai, the New Testament is, that ain't real. It stopped at the Old Testament. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to be circumspect. But this is just an account of a king inquiring of the Lord through a prophet. Okay. Right? So this is 1 Kings chapter 22 and verse 5, and it reads, And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of Yahweh today. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, and said unto them, Shall I go against Ramoth Galeh, Galeh, Ramoth Galeh to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for Yahweh shall deliver it into the hand of the king. So these prophets tell them to go up. You know what I'm saying? Just go up. You got it. <laughs> right? And Jehoshaphat said, is there not here a prophet of Yahweh besides that we might inquire of him? So he like all these people telling me to go up. He had that feeling. Hey, is right. somebody else right. that I can get a different right. perspective from? You know what I'm saying? All right. Verse 8. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, there is yet one man, Mike, Micah Yah, Micah Yah, the son of Imla, uh, Imla by whom we may inquire of Yahweh, but I hate him, for he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say so. So, <laughs> basically he hate him because he's telling the truth. Right. You know what I'm saying? Even though it's mm, seen evil to him because he's going off, he's doing wrong. Right. He's being wicked, so he don't got nothing good to prophesy right. about. Right. That's why he hate him. You know what I'm saying? He breaking the commandment right there. 
Right. You know, because you're supposed to love yeah. your neighbor exactly. as yourself. Exactly. No matter how much rebuke they give to you, no matter how much they rebuke you, you still got to love your people. You know right. what I'm saying? That's the love of the most high, man. Correction. That's the way of life. Right? right? Verse 9. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Hasten, hither, Michael Yah, the son of uh, Amla, the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, sat each on his throne, having put on their robes in a void place in the entrance of the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets prophesied before them. So the king of Israel, you know what I'm saying? He was wicked. All the kings of Israel was right. wicked. There was not one righteous king of yeah, Israel. Exactly. You know, and Jehoshaphat, they sit when they roll on on their, you know, on their throne. You know what I'm saying? Listen to everybody prophesy. I think to expound on that too. What's that? Israel. Oh yeah, Israel. Israel is the um, northern kingdom. Right. You know what I'm saying? Judah is the southern kingdom. You know, Judah, uh, the Jews consist of the tribe of Benjamin, the tribe of Levi, and the tribe of Judah. And the rest of the other tribes are the northern kingdom. So the king of Israel is the northern kingdom. More so the Hispanics and the Native Americans. Right. You know what I'm saying? They are the southern kingdom. I mean, Salaki, they are the northern kingdom, which is Israel. Salaki. Yeah. Just to give you some understanding on that. Right? And I'll give you some images, too, to show you, because that's how we learn through images. Huh. Right? So, um, and prophesied before them, verse 11. And uh, Zedekiah, the son of chi na -ana, made him horns of iron and he said thus said Yahweh with these thou shalt push the Samaritans uh, Syrians until thou have consumed them right and the prophets prophesied so saying go up to Ramoth Galilee and prosper for Yahweh shall deliver it into the king's hand so these prophets are straight up telling him a lot right they just they lying to him you know what I'm saying? Think, but they probably do think that they telling the truth though. Mm -hmm. They just not in the spirit. You know what I'm saying? They probably in their mind they think they telling the truth, but they lying to this man, right? Uh, verse thirteen. And the messenger that was going to Salaki, and the messenger that was going to call Michael Yah spake unto him, saying, Behold. Now the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with, with one mouth. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them, and speak that which is good. So they got the, the prophet Michael Yah, the one that he hate. Mm -hmm. That's going to tell them what's real. You know what I'm saying? He said, please, say, speak on one accord with these prophets. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. what they're telling me is good. Right? Verse 14. And Michael Yah said, as, the, as Yahweh liveth, what Yahweh said unto me, that I will speak. So he said, as the Lord liveth, as Yahweh liveth, whatever he say unto me is what I'm going to speak to you, whether it's good or bad. Right? Verse 15. So he came to the king, and the king said to him, Michael, Yah, shall we go against Ramoth Galid to battle, or shall we forbear? And he answered him, go and prosper, for Yahweh shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of Yahweh? And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. And Yahweh said, These have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you that he would so like, did I, did I not tell thee that he would prophesize no good concerning me? Because he just straight up, first he went with the flow. Right. Oh, it's going to do good. The king going to prosper. It's going to prosper. In the, uh, and he answered, go and prosper for, the, for Yahweh shall deliver it into the hand of the king. He just mocked his messengers because right. that's what they were saying. Right. And then he turned around and said, hey, I see all the hosts of Israel scattered. Right. Like they don't have a sheep. They don't have a master. Right. So he started... Thinking like, okay, he now he prophesying against me. Now he right. telling me we're finna lose the war, right? right? So, um, verse eighteen, and the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me but evil? 
And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of Yahweh. I saw Yahweh sitting on his throne, and all the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. So he saw the Most High on his throne. He saw the righteous angels on the right hand side. He saw his, his wicked angels on the left hand side, his demons. Because that's how the Most High rolled. He rolled with his angels, he rolled with his demons. Because he run them all. That's his army. That's the Most High army. Righteousness and wickedness. That's his army. You know what I'm saying? He said, verse 20, And Yahweh said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go, go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner, and the other said on that manner. So the Most High asked the angels, Hey, who gonna persuade Ahab? Which one of y'all gonna persuade Ahab? How are we gonna do this? Right? He asked his righteous angels. His, his righteous angels went like, hey, I can do this. I can go in this way. Swindle it like this. Then his wicked angels, the demons, they went in, hey, I can do this. I can do that. They're just discussing how they can persuade him to go in wow. all in war, right? Wow. So, verse 21. Wow. And there came forth a spirit and stood before Yahweh and said, I will persuade him. And Yahweh said unto him, wherewith? Like, what you talking about with us? How you gonna do this? Right. You know what I'm saying? He said, and he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. So the, the wicked side, the angels on the left hand side, they came right. to the most high. Hey, I can go be a lying spirit in all his prophets. And the most high like, you know what? You gonna do it and you gonna prevail. Now going on, go do your assignment, right? Because the Most High control the good and the evil. He created the good and the evil. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's the power of the Lord. Uh, you know what I'm saying? That they don't like to teach you in the church. Right. The Most High will put spirits on you. Right. You know what I'm saying? If you're not doing what he say do, right. he'll put spirits on you, yeah. bug you out, right. take you into a war and you lose. Right. You think you finna go into a battle and win because he gonna put lying spirits on all your property. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, verse 23 again, it says, verse 22 again, and it says, And Yahweh said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him and prevail also, go forth and do so. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord Yahweh have put a lying spirit in the mouth of all thy prophets, in the mouth of, of all these thy prophets, and Yahweh spoke in evil concerning concerning thee. You know what I'm saying? So Michael Yah, he went and prophesied truth because he was more tapped in right. than those prophets. He was more dedicated. He was more diligent. He right. was more studied. He was more obedient. So the Most High was dealing with him. Right. These prophets probably wore nice things, you know, look presentable. You know what I'm saying? Read the Bible every day, but they wasn't obedient. So the Most High wasn't dealing with them like they was dealing with with the, with, with Michael Yah. Mm -hmm. He not gonna just go put a lion spirit on Michael Yah because he doing what he say. To. There's no reason to bring that judgment on that man. Right. You know what I'm saying? There's no reason to put a lion spirit on a man that's committed to him. Right. But those that wasn't, he put a lion spirit on them. Four hundred mm -hmm. men. You know what I'm saying? So we just got to be circumspect and know who we dealing with, who we talking to, because you could be talking to a false prophet, you could be talking to a real prophet. Right. You know, your spirit got to be aligned. You got to know, you got to be able to discern. You know what I'm saying? That's the power we have that he gave us, the knowledge to know good and evil, and to know meaning to discern good and evil. If you being wicked, and you trying to inquire of the Lord and think somebody finna say something nice to you, uh-uh. You got to know, oh, I'm being wicked right now. As, as bad as I hate it, I'm being wicked right now. And I'm finna inquire of the Lord. I'm not finna expect somebody to say something good to me. Right. You know what I'm saying? You got to get counsel from the scriptures. If I'm being wicked, I got to seek rebuke, right. seek correction. You know what I'm saying? I can't seek something to go in my favor and I'm being wicked. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But that's how we inquire of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Through Man that's doing the work, man that's doing the will of the Heavenly Father. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to just close out with that one, man. You know, um, that's how we inquire for the Most High. You know, that's how we inquire of the Lord, man, through the mouth of His holy prophets.